Gaming is a big business that brings in big money. College frat boys. Play some Xbox. Is he parked in a disabled spot? Hey, what, the, what the fuck is this? Your brother's sim racing pals. JLB loan managers. Can't stop now, gotta win the war for the Nazis. Even yourself. Me? Get em, lad. They're all playing games. Million, nay, billion dollar companies such as EA and Bethesda. All of this just works. <laughs> had been propelled to fame and fortune due to video games. However, in 2006, there was one small problem faced by the industry. All the money was here, in the pockets of consumers, who were liable to spend it on useless rubbish such as food and bills. But the gaming companies needed it to be here, right in their pockets. Think of how many yachts Todd Howard could buy. Who's laughing now? With the combined allowance money of hardcore gamers. It's not an allowance, it's a stipend! Luckily, Bethesda had a plan to move all that sweet, sweet cash into their pockets. We're gonna make better video games. Yeah! <laughs> oh, wait, sorry, I was, I was reading from the wrong script. Ah, here we are. Scene one. My little pony getting whacked up big time. You know what I'm saying? The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion is a critically acclaimed RPG, famous for impeccable voice acting. Okay, okay, I'll show you. Photorealistic character models and an AI so advanced, it realizes the futility of all existence. Why are we still here? Bye. And seeks to end such suffering. Just to suffer. Naturally, due to these groundbreaking features, people were buying the game left, right, and center. And with an audience of millions begging for more content to sink their teeth into, Bethesda was in pole position to create new add-ons for Oblivion that they would then sell to a desperate crowd. Traditionally, these add-ons had come in the form of expansion packs that added dozens of hours of gameplay to an already meaty title. <laughs> yeah, boy. Oblivion's predecessor, Morrowind. Oh, you got a scaring problem, you Anwar? was successful enough to receive two of these expansions. One added a whole new island to explore, the other a brand spanking new city, and some weird BDSM crap. Oh, that roleplay. You n -war! It was likely that Oblivion would get the exact same treatment, oh, God! and everyone would go home happy. Yes! But there was only one problem. Coding, writing, and designing those dozens of hours of gameplay. Well, that took effort. Effort takes time. Time costs money. Bethesda couldn't have that. I'll kill you! <laughs> Luckily, they wouldn't need to, because someone at the company had a grand idea. What's this? That's what they gotta make. They could combine the idea of an expansion, cut the included content by, say, 99%, and sell it for the price of a burger. This is five o'clock. Ball down! We're out of here, boys! Development could be finished in an afternoon. Okay, time to hit go. Make the transfer. And consumers probably wouldn't notice they were being ripped off. This is a casino! The deal will always win! Because, come on. One rib witch, please! People bought junk food for these prices. Surely, they would buy junk software. Hello, can I get a mix? DLC. I don't think we have those here, sir. And when we're talking prices this slow? Who cares? Do I make myself clear? I'm sorry I wasn't listening. <laughs> the intent is to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment. And so, DLC was born. Be free, little friend. The D standing for down. The L standing for loadable. The C standing for... You get the idea. For goodness sake, we're in third grade, you know! Anyways, all you needed to purchase this DLC was an internet connection... Send it to the internet! ...and your mum's credit card. Put it on the plastic! Great! But who in their right mind would be stupid enough to fall for that? That's how we got horse armor. Yeah! <laughs> yep, for $2.50... Give your credit card. ...you could deck your equestrian ally out in some pretty fancy drip. Crap check! Boom bow! Yes, my chief. It may have added nothing in terms of gameplay... You what? No gameplay. But at least the textures looked alright. Holy shit, them graphics! Hell, Bethesda even decided to be generous and bundled the armor with an entire questline. Just ignore the fact that the quest was a glorified shopping trip. Oh well, Mum, I've just been to the post office, they've got a new horse armor. For what it's worth, Bethesda was widely mocked for having the gall to put out this crap, and it seems that the company would later learn its lesson. I've made a severe and continuous 
lapse in my judgment. Since future DLC for Bethesda's titles would have substantially more substance. But what if, instead of horrible DLC practices getting better, asterisk, 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 <laughs> they got worse. Scene 2. Yarmy Denzel Table Doofs, Evie Duke of Mimi Shoofs, Hippie Gipsy Upper Goop. The Sims needs no introduction. But we're gonna give it one anyway, because it, it would just feel weird without it. With over 200 million copies sold, I'm getting one of these. You are more likely to have played a game in the franchise than you are to live in my country. Anyway, in case you haven't played the game, it's a life simulator. Change clothes, eat food, <laughs> play video, browse 4chan, watch YouTube, all the stuff you do in real life. You can even do all the things you can't do in real life, such as get a job, get shredded, get friends, or get into a relationship. The series had always been notable for having a large amount of expansion packs on offer. What are those? On the shelf there. Uh -huh. Those are expansion packs. <laughs> that's a lot of expansion packs. Oh, that's nothing. I have 223 more in the closet. The Sims 1 had 7. The Sims 2 boasted 8 expansions. What? And 10 smaller ones that EA titled Stuff Packs. Belinda, I just can't understand how something so small can be so impressive. Well, Mark, you would know about that. Then, The Sims 3 decided to go completely overboard. 11 expansion packs, each going for $40. 9 stuff packs, all going for $20 a pop. And to really rub salt into the wound... <laughs> the game also offered 11 additional worlds that all went for the admittedly cheap price of $20 to $25. Finally! Something I can fucking afford! Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I meant to say, EACH! So anyways, I, I have no money right now. <laughs> that money didn't get you new mechanics, or even new items or clothes. Instead, you got new environments to muck around in for a few hours. That's it. That's all. Oh, I did a skit! <laughs> environments that, over on the forums, people were making for free! Booyah! And the worst part? Large portions of the DLC that was being released for The Sims 3 possessed an eerie resemblance with the DLC on offer from Sims 1 and 2. Hey! Hey, I've seen this one! I've seen this one! This is a classic! Pets? This is a personality! Oh wow, I wonder where you got that idea from. Holidays? General and amenities of, of the resort? We have... We've got an, an on-call Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, aren't you guys creative? Uni? I'm just a yearning for some learning! Holy shit, you guys must have renaissance to your creative skills. Instead of rolling all the DLC released for one game into the base package for the next, EA decided to instead rehash the same ideas over and over again, selling the same $40 expansions game after game after game. Good practice for making money, not exactly the best practice for consumers. We are not the same. But get this. You know how a minute ago I said that regurgitating old expansions was the worst part? Well, turns out, I'm a liar, because the actual worst part is just around the corner. The Sims 4 takes all the rubbish discussed previously and douses up to 11. Expansion packs. Eat this. Then it douses it up by another 11, because this time EA decided to launch Game Packs. $20 mini expansions Bam! that generally gave you one additional feature. Ooh. This one allowed you to go to a spa. <laughs> no, no, the other one. Yeah, yeah, that's it. $20 for retirees and bath towels. Brilliant. Hey, check this one out. It's got camping in, in the woods with, with tents. Um, we've also got a... S'mores. Yeah, s'mores! This one lets your sims listen to some emo music. Then, in 2021, EA released what is perhaps the biggest piss take of all. Yes! Kit packs. Everything's so fucked! Eight Australian dollars, roughly the price of these games, gave you bloody vacuum cleaners. Why would I try to escape real life by playing a game that's more depressing than real life? And the opportunity to dress like you were in an Adidas ad. That is flames, my G. Are your crabs so safe, fam? Creators run the show. Gonna get a chicken and those beefy man them. The so bait, fam. You ate my chicken nuggets, innit? What you want about blood? True that, fam. Which brings us on to the final part of this monetary hellscape. <laughs> Sponsored DLC. 
Ever since The Sims 2, EA has been releasing stuff packs featuring items from the real world. A grand total of four companies join the battle for your hard earned money. Give us your fucking money, cunt! Am I so out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. That's right, it's no longer enough to just sell you DLC. Mm. Hell, it's not longer enough to sell you DLC or barely any content. Some may call this junk. Me, I call them junk. EA decided to go for the hat trick. And sold their customers sponsored DLC with barely any content in them. So after buying a product, you can suffer the indignity of being told to buy yet another product. By the way, in case you're wondering, if you were in possession of way too much money and way too little sense and decided to buy all the Sims 4 DLC, it'll run you north of a grand. That's a laptop. Yeah, let's just uh, move on. When the franchise's own Jesus is upset with the game, you'd know you've screwed up. Oh good, another staff pack. Scene 3. <laughs> Metro Last Light is a post-apocalyptic shooter. In it, you play as blah 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 blah, trains, mutants, depression, subways, AKs, vodka, bullets, whatever. It's basically just a worse version of Russia. Okay, maybe slightly worse. Okay, maybe slightly better actually. Anyway, that's not important. What is important is that the developers for the game, 4A Games, were apparently forced to include some tasty pre-order exclusive DLC to really boost those sales figures. Boop, boop, boop. Afterburner's engaged! Normally, games just include some cosmetics or maybe a couple of mid-tier weapons I love you, kitchen gun! to ensure that nothing substantial is locked behind a paywall. Knowing this, can you guess what 4A Games did? Well, I'm gonna say B. Oh, you stupid son of a- why they made an entire difficulty level and released it as day one DLC. Oh my god, so fucked! Those who purchase the game normally, we'll take it. without a pre-order, would be able to choose from having an easy time, a normal time, or even a hardcore time. But 4A also offered a special, extra hard, ranger mode that was only available to two kinds of people. Those who rolled the dice and pre-ordered the game, Hey kid, wanna pre-order a game? Uh, yeah, okay. And those who coughed up the required $5 needed to purchase Ranger Mode from the online store. What made things worse is what 4A Games would later say regarding this DLC. The Ranger Mode, the way it's meant to be played. Then what the fu- Shouldn't everyone be playing this difficulty mode then? Ranger Mode. Ranger Mode. The way 4A Games defended this decision was equally nonsensical. It, it, it was the best choice we had. You, you guys were gonna pre-order the game anyway. I have several questions. Guys, if you wanted money, at this point, just say it. I am once again asking for your financial support. The way it was meant to be played? <laughs> More like the way it was meant to be paid, right? Now that's what I call comedy. Oh, um, I'll see myself out. Scene 4! I love boobies! Okay, so there's this game called The Saboteur. In it, you kill Nazis. Kyle. You're a worse version of Hitler! And blow stuff up. What the? It's a grand old time. War. It's fantastic. It got decent reviews. It has a little something for everyone. That's beside the point. The only relevant bit of information you need to know is that for $5, you could buy a DLC that turns a Nazi murder simulator into a... Oh. I can't show this, it's, it's the family channel. Won't somebody please think of the children? Here, have some birds instead, you horny bastards. Lady pecs. Oh, wow. Totally didn't see that one coming. Scene 5. So, the previous DLC we've looked at, while shocking examples of companies trying to nickel and dime their consumers, are, for the most part, not the most expensive pieces of software out there. When was it not all about the money? The offensive part isn't that this costs $9, it's that for 9 bucks, all you get is this. As a form of entertainment, video games aren't exactly the most expensive hobby you can indulge yourself in. 
Are games becoming too expensive? You think your life is hard? That is, unless your choice of game happens to be Train Simulator. I declare bankruptcy! $36 for the base game. Another $36 for a single train. $7.50 for a new skin for said train. I'm in way over my head. And $57 for a track to run that train on. What's more is that the game is very accepting of other cultures. In fact, the developers are so progressive and multicultural that they allow you to spend money in a ton of different countries. Spend money in the UK. Spend money in Germany. Listen, don't mention the war. Spend money in the US of A. This is our oil now. You can even spend money in wherever the hell this is. And you can also expect to spend a lot of money. Because if you were to buy all 659 DLC, it'd come to a grand total... Oh, shit! ...of $10,000. Forget buying a laptop with the money you spent on The Sims, that price could net you a used car. This is the new 2022 train simulator, and it is the most expensive video game on Steam. Hmm, let's see. A motor vehicle... Morning benders, jump in the Minge-mobile or fake trains in a fake game. It's still real to me, damn it! A motor Yo, vehicle is that a, is that, or a bunch that, of that, pixels that, on my screen. That a, Yo, is that a- Canadian Pacific SD60 loco add-on. A motor vehicle or a guarantee that I will never touch a woman ever again. I'll take option two, please. Oh, you stupid son of